Hey folks, welcome back to My Kitten Raids. I am Eleanor and it is about 10 or 15 minutes to go until the start of Dewey's 24 hour readathon for October 2018. So it's about quarter to 11 at night here, so it's quite late. Um, I did have a little bit of a nap this afternoon, so I'm reasonably perky. Um, and so my plan is to start, and I'm going to start with Binti, uh, The Night Masquerade by Nettie Corrifor. So this is the third book in the Binti trilogy of novellas. Um, it's quite short, it's a novella. So that's what I plan to start with. I'm not sure if I will get it all read tonight, it depends on how tired I get. I want to read for at least an hour, so until midnight. And after that, if I'm still feeling okay, I might continue on. Um, and then the plan will be to go to sleep. And depending on when I actually go to bed, my alarm will go off at probably 7, 7.30 in the morning, just so I get a good sort of six and a half, seven hours sleep. Um, yeah, that's the plan. And then I will be reading all day tomorrow. So, yes, it's, it's, it's quite nasty weather here at the moment. We had storms all afternoon, so I think it's going to be a good day for a readathon tomorrow. Um, yeah. But that is Binti, The Night Masquerade. I'm really, really looking forward to reading this and finishing this series. Hey, so it's just gone 9 o'clock in the morning on the Sunday of Dewey's Readathon. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a slower start than I was planning on today because I actually ended up, I couldn't put Binti, The Night Masquerade down last night and so I was reading until 1 in the morning. Um, so I could finish it. It was, wow, it was an emotional roller coaster. Um, really, really good emotional roller coaster, but an emotional roller coaster. So, um, I finished that last night and then went to bed. Um, I set my alarm for eight, so, um, I got up at eight and started getting ready for the day. And I picked up Mother of Invention, um, which, um, is of course one of my anthologies that I'm trying to finish off. Um, I've read two stories so far this morning. One by Nissy Scholl that I'm, I'm not really sure I understood. I mean, I kind of understood it, but I'm not really sure it was to my liking. It was about an AI giving birth to her own offspring kind of thing. And I'm not really quite sure I got some of the plot, but, um, but yeah. So, and I've just finished one by Justina Robson, um, which I quite like, um, about, Selfies taking over the world, um, about little personal AIs um, taking over the world kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so I have uh, five more stories in this, I think, before I'm finished it. So I'm going to continue on with that for the moment. Um, yeah, so I'll update you again soon. So another hour has passed in the readathon and I am still reading Mother Invention. I read four stories in that hour. Um, and so I only have two left, which is great. Um, so yeah, I mean, there were very different stories. Like there was one about knitting AI and revolution, which I really, really liked. Um, and then there was a really creepy one from Karen Warren. So, um, which was, yeah, not I don't think it was creepy in a bad way. It was just creepy and it was dealing with death a lot, um, and murder. So, um, although I think it was kind of, kind of hopeful and good in some ways, but yeah, yeah, anyway, and there was, um, yeah, so there was two other stories as well, there, but I'm enjoying them. So, yeah, see, I can't, I'm obviously still groggy, I can't enunciate properly. But yeah, so I have two stories left in Mother of Invention, and then I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be up next. I'm leaning towards maybe, and it's in my TBR up here, um, picking up the Lady Jane Grey book, um, and reading some non-fiction for a bit of a change. Maybe... Or maybe I will pick up Restoration by Angela Slider. Um, it, those are probably the most likely ones that I'll pick up. But um, yeah, so that's what I've got planned for the next hour, I guess. Finishing off this definitely though. So yay! Another anthology off my list. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock, which means there's 12 hours to go, I think. Yes, we're halfway through. So, yay! 
Anyway, as expected, I finished Mother of Invention, um, edited by Rivka Raphael and Tansy Ren Roberts. Um, yeah, so it was a really good anthology, actually. Um, one I'm probably going to want to read again um, and take notes because um, there's some really interesting, quite stories and perspectives on artificial intelligence, which is really the whole point of it. So, um, but yeah, so finishing that, I'm really pleased. Um, and then I picked up Lady Jane Grey, A Tudor Mystery by uh, Eric Ives. Um, I'm counting it as a biography for my yearly challenge, although from the, reading the prologue in the first chapter, it's perhaps not as much of a biography as it's a dissection of what actually happened in, in, in 1553, um, you know, when Edward VI died and the crisis happened. But still, it's most it's mostly focused on Jane, so I'm including it as a biography. Um, she's she's one of my favourite historical characters, probably my favourite historical character, um, historical person. Um, I find her so I found her intriguing since I was a kid. Um, so yeah, I'm reading that at the moment. So I don't know whether I'll read it all in one chunk. Um, it's less than three hundred pages actually, so it's hopefully not going to take too long. But it is quite, how do I put it, it's non-fiction, which means it's naturally quite dense, even though it's actually really interesting, like, even just reading that first little 13 pages, it's quite evocatively told. So, um, so I might have to break it up with something else, but for the moment, I'm quite happy reading Lady Jane Grey. So, I guess I'll see you all again at noon. So whoops, the sign of a good book is that you get a bit lost in it um, and it's actually about quarter past 12. I've missed my 12 o'clock check-in because I was busy reading Lady Jane Grey. So I'm 41 pages in now um, and it's very interesting but still kind of like it's setting up everything. So the first sort of few chapters is context in sort of the source material that's still available and um, all of that about that particular period in 1553 um, and then um, the bit that I'm current section I'm currently up to is a sort of a look at the people involved the protagonists um, so and their families and where they came from and all that kind of stuff so it's a bit of a reminder this chapter I've just finished it's a bit of a reminder of the history of um, Jane's lineage so she was her mother was the daughter of Princess Mary who was Henry VIII's sister um, and her father's great grandmother was Elizabeth Woodville, who was actually Henry VIII's grandmother. I think I think that's the right generational thing. Um, but yeah, she married Elizabeth Woodville. She married um, Edward the seventh, I think. No, sixth. Edward the sixth. Oh, I can never remember. There's too many Edwards and there's too many Henrys. But yeah, um, so she was actually descended from Elizabeth Woodville on her father, Henry Gray's side, as well as from Princess Mary um, on her mother's side. So, um, and therefore descended from Princess Mary and Henry VII. So, um, yeah. But it's a bit good reminder of, of the genealogy because I can never keep the genealogy straight. So I can never keep dates straight either. So I'm sort of really trying to press it into my mind. It was 1553. 1553. So um, was the crisis. But yes. So I am enjoying it. Um, I thought I would remember would mention what I'm listening to during this readathon. Um, because if I leave, let the house be silent the entire time, my brain goes a little weird. So usually I have a reading playlist, which I've put in a whole bunch of like very gentle cheerful um but not like energetic um songs but i'm not using that this time i am i'm being very much in a eurovision mood this weekend so i've literally just put all of my eurovision music even the stuff that i don't really like it's just every album which i have like six or seven of them um into a playlist and i've just got that on very quietly while i'm reading so yay european history and eurovision <laughs> Good combination, yeah? But yeah, so that's where I'm up to it. And because I'm so into it, I'm going to keep reading this. So, I mean, I keep meaning to think that I should read a novel, but 
I'm enjoying this, so I may as well keep going. Um, and because I, I would love to actually finish it today, it is like the actual. If you take out all like the um, you know appendices and, and indexing and everything, it's only like two hundred ninety-three pages. So if I'm forty-one pages through, it's you know it's a fairly short sort of biography slash history book. So um, yeah, but that's where I'm up to. So it's just gone one o'clock. It's ten hours to go in the readathon. Still proceeding steadily through uh, Lady Jane Grey. Um, I'm at the moment. I am up to page sixty-two. Um, so it's sort of it's a, it's so sort of slow going page wise, but it's still keeping my attention. So I'm going to continue with it. Um, the slight odd thing that's really done is I've not really been my appetite's not been great. So I bought all these snacks. I've not really eaten many of them. Although this hour I did actually manage some crisps and some. Oh, um, raspberries. So that's you know, raspberries, vaguely healthy, which is pretty much the only healthy thing I've probably eaten all day. But um, been drinking a lot, but only like Coke. So I should probably actually have some water just to calm down the level of sugar in my system. But um, but yeah, so that's where I'm up to at the moment. Um, yeah, really enjoying reading about Jane Grey and her origins and her family and. You know the context of her life, including particularly at the moment, I'm reading a bit about, well, a bit about, about her father, but there's also been a bit of discussion about her interest in academics, um, which you know was not exactly ordinary for even a noble girl of the time. So um, yeah, still going on that. Hey, so it's actually been a couple of hours since my last update. It's just gone three o'clock. Um, I've eaten a little bit, although still nothing hugely substantial. I just am not eating much today that's all um and i'm still reading lady jane gray a shooting mystery um i am now up to pay i've just finished page 113 so i'm a little over the third way through the actual text um not including all the stuff at the end of you know history book but um but yeah i'm still really enjoying it um it is slow going i think non-fiction usually is a bit more slow going and it is a rather large sized book even if the type is quite big as well so um yeah I'm just sort of continuing to make my way through um yeah nothing else really interesting has happened in the last two hours I'm just continuing to read this book because I'm continuing to enjoy it hey so it's just gone five and it's been two hours since my last update um I am now about halfway through the actual text of the Lady Jane Grey book, so I mean it's still really interesting. I still haven't quite got back to the end of the bit of the um, protagonists, but I'm up to Edmund, Edward, uh, Edward now. Sorry, um, and then it will move on to the rest of the kind of the events and what happened and stuff. So, um, but I decided I needed a bit of a break because I have pretty much been reading this all day, um, and so I went back to some short stories and I picked up this little collection which is Showtime by Narelle and Harris. And so it's four little stories, basically looking at the sort of the tropes of horror creatures. So there's a story about ghosts. There's a story about a vampire. There's a story about um, a zombie. That's what I've read so far. I think, I think the next story is also about a vampire, but the first three have all been sort of set in modern times and sort of using the tropes, but busting them. And it, it's sort of horror in a way that I can cope with, actually, um, with pretty much sort of a, a meaningful, mostly positive message to the story. So, um, yeah, I'm really actually quite enjoying this. And I've just got one more story left, uh, which is about 35 pages, I think. Um, something like that. Yeah, so it's... It's, yeah, it's basically horror creatures and family drama all sort of tied in together. So, yeah, so I'm going to finish off that and then go back to Lady Jane Grey, I think. So, yeah, still, I've got about, what, six hours left, something like that. Still plenty of time to get plenty more read. Hey, so it's six o'clock and I have finished Showtime by Narelle Ann Harris and I really, really liked it. Like, seriously, I wasn't expecting it to like it as much as I did. Like, I mean, it interested me, but because it refers to itself as horror stories, I was a little bit worried because 
I don't cope well with horror, but I was still intrigued. And actually, I like I wasn't scared at all, to be honest. It wasn't that kind of horror. And it was like, yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, I really, really like that. And it's another book finished, so yay. And I am now 168 pages into Lady Jane Grey. So I'm continuing to read this. Um, I would really like to get this finished at least um, before the readathon ends because <laughs> I have so many books on my currently reading pile because the last sort of four or five months I've just been picking stuff up, starting it and putting it down as I really would prefer not to have more. So I really want to actually try and read this. So I, hopefully I can get it done. Um, but yeah, it's still really interesting. And I've just finished the part about the protagonists. So we are now moving on to the 13 days um, between Jane being told she's queen and Mary routing her. So it's, things are going to get interesting. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to be grabbing some dinner soon. Probably nothing particularly healthy because that's the kind of mood I'm in and probably not much. But I should probably actually make the effort. So that'll probably happen soon, and I'll continue reading Lady Jane Grey. Hey, so it's quarter past nine. Um, I've got an hour and 45 minutes left of the readathon, and I've just finished Lady Jane Grey, A Tudor Mystery by Eric Ives. It was a really good book. I'm a little disappointed that it took so long for me to read, given that it's not exactly a long book, but that's just the nature of um, nonfiction, I guess. Um, so I've got an hour and three quarters left. Um, the moment I'm thinking I might read my Lumberjanes comic um, because my brain needs a little bit of break and that will give me something else to tick off. Um, and then I don't know, I might start some short stories again. I might start a novel. I might read another comic. I'm not really sure yet. But yeah, that's what I'm up to. Hey, so the Dewey's 24 hour readathon for October 2018 is finished. Um, I read a total of... 947 pages um that included i think it's like 23 short stories a novella a non-fiction book and a comic basically so yeah I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with that um certainly knocked a few things off off my tbr pile so just to recap what i actually read i started off with binti uh the night masquerade by nadia corifor which is the third in the binti trilogy of novellas um, it was great and emotionally draining and I couldn't put it down and I ended up being still awake at one in the morning so that was a thing and it also me, helps me to meet my goal this year of trying to finish series because now this series is finished yay so there was that and then this morning I finally sat down and finished off Mother of Invention the anthology by Arif Rafal and Tansy Rain Roberts so this is the one about AI that have been created by women or by non-binary gendered people um, or the AI themselves are female or non-binary um, so I finished this off with I think it was the last eight stories um, and yeah really enjoyed it it's a really good quality anthology but you know I expected that it's 12th planet press and it's I've kickstarted their stuff before so I really recommend Mother of Invention after that I started, if I can find it, woo, Lady Jane Grey, A Tudor Mystery by Eric Ives, and I did finish it today. Um, despite the fact that it's only less than 300 pages of actual text, it took me most of the day to read because it's non-fiction. So. But it was a really in-depth sort of examination of what actual evidence we have around the crisis of 1553 when Eric, uh, sorry, not Eric, Edward the Seventh, Edward the Seventh, I think it's Edward the Seventh, passed away and left the crown to his cousin Jane. Um, so it looks at like the context. It looks like the looks at the sort of source material we have. It looks at Jane herself and the other protagonists, and then the events that happened and what the timeline was and what people's motivations were. So really interesting. I also read. Showtime by Narell and M. Harris, which was a surprisingly great read. I say surprisingly for me because um, it's horror stories with like horror monsters and I'm not really great with horror, but actually these stories really worked for me. 
So, um, there's a little collection of four short stories. Um, two, there's two stories about vampires, there's one about a zombie, and there is one about ghosts, and they're all set in the modern world. So, um, and there's always a bit of a twist. Um, and always something a bit hopeful, I think. Or a lesson to be learnt, even if it's not hopeful. So, yeah, that was really good. I also read one graphic novel, which is Lumberjanes Volume 5 Band Together. Um, or I always love Lumberjanes. Um, it's usually by Noel Stevenson, who wrote the first issue in this collection, but the rest of them, the, little, the overall story arc, um, was actually written by someone else, uh, Waters? Uh, Shannon Waters and Kay Lay. Um, and the artist also, for the most of it, was different. Um, and I'm not really sure I like that particular art style. So that was, yeah, I still rated it four out of five, but because the story was really great and it was really cute and everything, but yeah, the art style was a bit not me. So I read that. And the last thing that I read was I picked up World's Next Door, edited by Tahani Wesley. This is an anthology, um, and I read like the first 11 stories. They're all very short stories. Um, it's big type because they're, they're pretty much kids stories. So, or middle grade stories. So little short stories about other worlds. So the going to Narnia or the worlds or the going to space or falling through something or finding something weird or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's your kids that are doing this. So, um, yeah, so it's otherworldly. So I'm actually really enjoying this. Like, it's very, very cute. There's a lot of really nice stories, really sweet stories. Um, and yeah, so I'm, like I said, 11 stories in, which is 86 pages. So I'm not quite halfway through yet. But yeah, so that was what I read for the Dewey's 24 hour readathon. Um, in this October 2018. As usual, I'm really looking forward to Dewey's again in April. Well, I hope I can participate in April. I may have someone coming to visit me in April, so it will depend on the dates. But, 24 hour readathon, gotta love it. So, um, yeah, that's knocked a few things off my TBR, knocked a few things off my challenge list, and put me back in front on my Goodreads challenge. So, um, if you participated, let me know and let me know what you read. Um, if you've read any of these, let me know what you thought about them and I'll see you all again really, really soon. Bye.